Hello, I'm Chai Hoffelenia. Welcome to Talk Thursday. It's been two months since Typhoon Yolanda, known internationally as Haiyan, hit the Philippines. The government is embarking on an ambitious rehabilitation program, but it's not without its controversies. Following reports of alleged overpricing in the construction of bunkhouses for survivors, some groups also say they don't comply with international standards. With us today is Public Works Secretary Rogelio Singson. He joins us to talk about his agency's work in the rehabilitation efforts. Good afternoon, Secretary Singson. Thank you for thank you for joining us. We're we're very Pleasure. happy that Pleasure. you could be with us. Um, Public Works has been in the limelight <laughs> in the last few days. Um, and this is because of the bunk houses. There have been allegations of, of overpricing, and I know that you've b you've tried to explain this. But um, what do you say to all these charges and, and allegations? Well, uh, let's let's put it in the proper perspective. The we were assigned uh, part of our assignment was to help out in the shelter component of the overall uh, what we call rehab reconstruction for. Yolanda or Ray, uh, reconstruction assistance for Yolanda. So our involvement was in the temporary shelter. Mm -hmm. okay. Second is in the rehabilitation of public works, roads, bridges, and the schools, hospitals, and so on. The third was to help out in debris management. Mm -hmm. So that's the role assigned to us. Now, in terms of the uh, shelter assistance, our particular component is the construction of temporary shelter. Mm -hmm. Having, considering the huge number of people that will need permanent houses, uh, apparently the United Nations group which they refer to themselves as the shelter cluster. Mm -hmm. They're involved in what they refer to as emergency shelter. Yes. Meaning tents and tarpaulins. Okay. okay. Now, considering, as I said, the number of permanent houses that have to be constructed, easily over 100,000, it will take some time before you can make those houses available. You need site you need to identify the site, develop the site, you and need do land. The, the land, and then do the actual house construction. Mm -hmm. Now, in the meantime, from the emergency shelter or the tents and the tarpaulins, the international communities are also saying people should not be staying in tarpaulins and tents more than four months. Mm -hmm. So, in between, where do they go? Right. Okay. So, with thought of putting the bunkhouses, and this is not new. We have had bunkhouses used in Sambuanga, mm -hmm. in Bohol, in Sendong, so this is nothing new. Mm -hmm. So we You've done this before. We've done this before. The same things have been done in the past. So we construct, we started constructing immediately after the event mm -hmm. when the local governments were able to identify the sites. Okay? So many of the LGUs identified local government-owned sites, so immediately started constructing. Yeah. Now, the issue of uh, overpriced or... Now, this is what happened. We came up with the, with the standard design, which is a typical design of a bank house. We came up with our unit cost. Mm -hmm. We removed the profit margins, we removed the overhead margins, and started talking to local contractors to start with. Mm -hmm. We said, this is our price. Who, will, who are willing to undertake this, to construct these bank houses at these prices, which I know is rather low because we've removed the margins. So you had specifications We had specifications in terms of how thick should be the GI sheet, what kind of flooring, and this is how it looks. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. A typical bank house uh, has 24 rooms. Yes. Okay. Uh, a room is 8.64 square meters. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is the typical design. We gave them the specifications, what kinds of materials they were supposed to use. 
the thickness of the plywood, the thickness of the flooring, uh, and so on. And one bunkhouse would be good for how many families or how many people? A, a bunkhouse an, would have 24 rooms. So it really depends on how big the family would be going into these units. Mm -hmm. If, for example, ideally if it is less than four members of a family, one room would be sufficient. But if you have a big family, then you can allow them to use two units side by side. The partitions are easy to knock, uh, knock down. Mm -hmm. no? So you have, in effect, one family occupying two rooms. Did you, were you, when you, when you had your specifications, did you think in terms of families or did you think in terms of individuals? Because if we go by the, of course you know this now, the Sphere Handbook, they were saying that ideally there should be 3.5 square meters per, per person. That's right. Um, was this something that was but, factored in but then? But the 3.5 refers more to permanent shelter. Oh, I see. Okay. This is permanent per and this is, and we're this talking temporary, about temporary. This intermediate. This is an intermediary. Our thinking was they're better off in these bunk houses than staying in tents or tarpaulins okay. or where they were. Yes. Because you, you've seen the Tacloban situation. Some people just stay underneath tarpaulins. Yeah. Okay. So we felt that this was a lot safer, this was a lot better option while waiting for the permanent shelter or why they were rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Because aside from, aside from us constructing the temporary shelter, we are also providing construction materials assistance. Okay. So let's go in particular in the case of Giwan. Yeah. Okay. In the case of Giwan, after the event, when the president visited the Giwan, we, we met with the mayor and we said, okay, mayor, if you have a site uh, based on the number of families that you have to relocate, we think you will, we will need to construct 36 bank houses mm -hmm. on the basis of one room per family. Mm -hmm. okay. So 36 bank houses was... Now the problem is they did not have enough site for 36 bank houses. Okay. So what do you do? So what happened was, okay, why don't we provide you construction materials instead so that those who can rebuild on their own provided they're in the safe side could start constructing and that's what happened we started distributing construction materials to these families uh, about 20 to 24 gi sheets per family mm -hmm. okay, with nails with uh, hammer and saw so they could start rebuilding mm -hmm. As a result of that, they really did not need the 36. Okay. Okay, they just needed 13. But we were already in the process of constructing 17. Mm -hmm. okay, so he said, okay, finally he said, we'll accept the 17. Okay. Now, the issue here comes in where there's confl political conflict between himself and the congressman. Okay. When we bid it out or when we called for contractors, who are willing to undertake this. The contractors did not come from G1. There are no contractors in G1. They were coming from the c c uh, center of Eastern Samar, Borongan, yeah. and which was not heavily damaged. Yes. So they, the contractors came from Borongan, which is good because they, they would hire locally, mm -hmm. which would mean then livelihood, livelihood yes. you start generating. This is so labor intensive to construct four bunk houses you need 100 workers and for how a month. many day, how many for days how long for one month one whole month for one whole month and remember we started constructing as early as november 18 mm -hmm. you know, because we wanted to be able to complete them before christmas mm -hmm. so the bottom line 11 of the 13 that we have completed are already occupied in gi1 okay. okay now and they were saying we definitely prefer staying here than where we were, especially the situation in Giwan at this time of the year. It's raining every day, mm -hmm. you know, heavy rains. You know. So, now, so it seems you didn't have problems in Giwan, except of the the political conflict. Okay. okay one accusing the other and yes. counter accusations and so on. You know. And that's where some of the uh, talk about and overpriced, uh, under specs. Now, 
keep in mind that we have not paid any of these contractors. Right. So what we're doing now is we're sending our quality assurance units to inspect whether they in fact follow the specifications. Mm -hmm. We specified very clearly how thick the roofing should be. Mm -hmm. It's 0.400 millimeters. Now, unfortunately, what is in the market locally available is not that thick. and It could be as thin as 0.17. There is no way that I can accept a very thin GI sheet. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, the flooring, we specified marine plywood yes. because precisely of the rains and so on. So if it is not marine plywood, they will have to change that or we don't pay them. Okay. Okay. So there is no damage to government. There is no overpricing. And there's quality control, supposedly. There is quality control because we've not paid, we've yes. not accepted any of them. Right. In fact, in spite of the fact that they're already be occupied. So what was the basis for Senator Laxon saying that, you, you know, there, there are some contractors getting a 30% commission, 30 to 35% even? Well, this is the information that was given to him by the municipal engineer of Giwan. Okay. Again, because of the political conflict. Mm -hmm. But I said, when I talked to the mayor, please don't get us involved in, in any of these political you know, bickerings. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you were also quoted as saying that given the, the magnitude of, of destruction, the number of people who have been displaced, the number of houses that have been destroyed, it will take more than two years to to provide new housing or shelter for Well, uh, for my them. assessment is if we are to construct more than 100,000 mm -hmm. houses under government supervision, uh, my assessment is on the basis of our, the history of how fast government housing are generated. Mm -hmm. uh, Push to the limit, maybe 40,000, 50,000, if it is just government alone doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's why in these discussions with Senator Laxon, we said if there's any assistance, the private sector should be coming in or the foreign community should be coming, it should be in the shelter program because we need all the help so that we can accelerate the construction of uh, housing. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, as I said, if the capacity of the local market is only 40,000, if you're talking of at least 100,000, that's more than two years. Yeah. Okay. So, Senator Laxon has com completely agrees that the private sector can best assist government in the construction. We have the Habitat, Gawad Kalinga, uh, the big corporations are willing to contribute mm -hmm. to the shelter program. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost um, to build one bank house? Uh, one bank house, full cost, no, full yeah. cost, uh, is 959,000 mm -hmm. per bank house. A bank house is 28.8 uh, meters by uh, 7.2 mm -hmm. meters. Okay? And as I said, 24 rooms. Yeah. After removing all of the margins and so on, we're down to 836,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's cheaper. It is cheaper than the full cost. Yeah. Right. Now, um, and we're also using unit costs based on an average of the region mm -hmm. because I am almost certain the prices in Leyte and Samar are much higher than the unit cost that we use. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so I strongly feel that, you know, the charge of overcharging, it's, m if ever, it is more of under specification, non-compliance to the specifications. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, the materials are not readily available. So if the contractor uh, cannot find a 0.4 millimeter thickness, they'll probably settle for what is in the market, yes. which might be lower than that. Yeah. Um, there's also, well, Gawad Kalinga supposedly spends about 125,000 per, per unit for, permanent, for a permanent uh, house or, 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 or shelter. 
um, is this something that well if you're if you're looking at eight but this is per bunk house no? 836 836 yeah, for 24 yes units uh, on a per square meter that's about uh, 3,800 uh, mm -hmm. per square meter mm -hmm. now. Just if you are to consider, let's say, 25 or even 30, mm -hmm. thousand, 30 square meters per family, mm -hmm. uh, that's about the correct price. The Gawad Kalinga. Yeah, yeah. Right? 125,000. Yeah. Now. So we're not far from there mm -hmm. now, except that how long will it take for the permanent shelter to come in? The sites have to be identified, the permanent site, the, light, yeah. the lots. Yes. You have to prepare the land. Site preparation, the roads have to be there. The and you would have no build areas. And then supposedly. you have no build zones yeah. in certain areas. So it's not going to be ready soon, the permanent shelter. So in the meantime, do we just leave them in the tents or do we just leave them in the, in the tarpaulins? It's a difficult choice because if you, if you say, okay, they'll, they'll be there, this is supposed to be temporary housing only, so these are the specifications mm -hmm. and these are actually better than tarps. Um, but there are international, there are also international standards. Um, one, one question that comes to mind is, Weren't you coordinating or talking with Secretary Dinky Soliman? No, we, and in fact, we kept discussing this. Now, yeah. okay, this is where the economics of it come in. Mm. Okay. Do we continue to build bunk houses, yeah. and until when? Because I personally, if we could construct the permanent shelter tomorrow, we don't need the bunk houses. Yeah. Okay. Because it's temporary. It's an and that's additional expense. That's an additional expense. Especially now that they want us to construct bigger units in the bank houses. If we were to construct uh, a 20 square meter mm -hmm. bank house, and if it's at uh, 4,000 per square meter, mm -hmm. that's already 120,000. You might as well build a permanent shelter. Yes. Okay. So, Again, that's why in the meeting this uh, morning, we said how far or how much, how many bunk houses do we construct? Okay. There's, there's a question here from social media. What are some changes in the current building code to align itself with international standards? Uh, the building code will only apply in the permanent shelter. There is okay. no... Uh, well, the specifications uh, for the temporary shelter does not apply, the building code does not apply for temporary, neither will the building code apply on tents and tarpaulins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you, you, we don't adopt the building code. No. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do, let's say, when we put, because the bunk houses are provided with uh, electrical, one light, per room. Mm -hmm. okay. So we of course follow the electrical uh, code, no? mm -hmm. the, the size of the wires and so on. Yes. Um, also there's, there's, there's been an observation that uh, you were very quick to offer your resignation, which, <laughs> sounded, which sounded familiar <laughs> because Secretary Petilia also did the same thing. Well, in my case, as I said, it's out of frustration. Uh, you know, we have been, we've worked so hard to, to give DPWH a new image in yes. three years. Uh, we've worked so hard to remove the aspect of being the most corrupt agency in government. Mm -hmm. And this is not even our core, core function. No? Mm -hmm. We were just supporting uh, the shelter cluster. And here we are facing an issue of overpricing or corruption on a non-core function of DPWH. of DPWH. You know, we had to bring in 70 contractors from all over the country just to help in the construction of these bunk houses. 
practically on a voluntary basis, not even a voluntary basis. We were practically twisting their arm to please help because we wanted to construct as quickly as possible the temporary houses or temporary bunk houses before Christmas. Mm. Okay. So they volunteered without any payment yet. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, here comes this issue of overpricing, corruption, and so on. It's so unfair to the contractors, to our employees who were who had to volunteer and from as far as Region 3, NCR, uh, Mindanao, just to help in the construction. Our workers were sleeping on dump trucks. Mm. Okay? They were sleeping in temporary <laughs> shelters. Well, whatever they could finish, that's where they slept. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, to tell them that you know you w corruption was it's so unfair. So it's frustrating for you that you're getting it's really all very this frustrating. flack when this is actually not part of your. It's not even a, our core. core. Yeah. It's not even our core business. <laughs> uh, okay. But if anyone can prove that this is overpriced, I tell you, I will not stay a day longer. You've, you've done quite a lot in, in the department, and the president, I think, has, has recognized that his, in, in the past, SONAS has always cited DPWH, and you've managed to generate savings for, for your department. Every year, we're averaging about 8 to 10 billion in savings. And here, this is only like, what, 84 million project. It's so lopsided. <coughs> The people have to look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. do, you th do you also think that, uh, well, you, you made reference to it earlier. You said that uh, at, the local, at the local level, there's politics and it gets in the way of, of the work. Um, you, you said Giwan was okay. You've, you've managed to move things there. How about Tacloban? Tacloban, we have continued to support uh, the cleanup <coughs> of the whole of Tacloban. Mm. Okay. Um, <coughs> we, we continue to be there uh, in uh, helping manage the, 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 the dump site of Tacloban. Mm -hmm. uh, every, every three days, we practically have to go back to our national roads mm -hmm. to clear the debris that comes from the secondary roads. Okay? Isn't that supposed to be the task of the local government unit? Assuming they don't have the equipment because of sheer volume. Yes. Uh, we're not complaining. All we're saying is acknowledge who is doing what. Okay? But to claim that we're not helping, that's rather unfair. Uh, we have, like for before Christmas, we had as many as 70 equipment in Tacloban alone, mm -hmm. uh, either in the form of dump trucks, uh, Tacloban and Palo later, which is the adjoining town, yes. government center. You know? Because we have to keep the roads clear. Mm -hmm. you know? We had to help the airport, the OTC, uh, at least clean up the airport terminal, put some new GI sheets so that at least while people are waiting, they're not uh, exposed to the rains. Mm -hmm. you know? So we had to do all of that. Well, there's this reassuring comment from, from social media from at Monchin de la Cruz. He says, please tell Secretary Singh Son that we believe in his integrity. Keep up the good work in, in government. Thank you so much. At <laughs> least you have one believer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are probably more. But uh, just going back to the, the dilemma you pointed out a while ago, you, you have to prepare or you have to make temporary shelter available for so many who have been rendered help uh, homeless. At the same time, you have to think far ahead yes. of permanent uh, permanent housing. Um, I imagine you would need good leadership um, here, both at the local and well, the national government. Yeah, the uh, secretary Ping is focusing on 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 that portion. Yes. No? Uh, in fact, uh, I understand. Or two two days or two days ago, he he brought in all the captains of industry uh, and unveiled the rehabilitation plan, mm -hmm. 
and the several sectors where they can contribute, either in school building, uh, shelter, or uh, hospitals, and so on. Uh, so uh, the feedback he gave this morning to the president was that the, the private sector is very much interested in undertaking a lot of the activities. Mm -hmm. right? That's fine, and this is what I was saying earlier. If they will, if we will rely only on the government's capacity to s construct permanent shelter, it will take at least two years, or even longer than two years. Mm -hmm. But in in case the private sector, Gawad Kalinga, Habitat, yeah. and so on, yeah. start helping out, then we hope to be able to accelerate the construction of permanent shelter. Ideally, how much or um, what what percent? Um, from the private sector, or what percent of the of the work um, could be shouldered by the private sector? Okay, people kept referring to Ache. Mm -hmm. I've heard this several times yes. by architect uh, Palafox. Yes. What what they don't tell us is that in the case of Ache, they constructed 140,000 uh, permanent shelter, mm -hmm. but that 140,000 all came in the form of grants and donations. Nothing was funded from the Indonesian government. That's amazing. Okay. And that's why they could afford to construct 42 square meters to as big as 84 square meters. Mm. Now, mm -hmm. is that something sustainable for the Philippine government using government resources? Okay. Our socialized housing sizes are in the 24 to as high as 30 square meters no way can we sustain even at 42. Mm -hmm. okay. But if they're coming in with donations and free, why not? Isn't there a systematic way of drawing them in? Um, how, do you, how do you invite well, or encourage the private sector well, to become that's part why of in, in a meeting when we, in the, the Yolanda or Ray, the construction assistance for Yolanda was launched, we said these are the areas where we will need uh, foreign donors and uh, private sector. Mm -hmm. Shelter is one, mm -hmm. especially in providing uh, mater construction materials. Why construction materials? Let's just look at the numbers. 500,000 totally damaged. Yeah. 500,000 houses need to have permanent roofing. Assuming the 24 sheets are needed, GI sheets are needed for each house which will cover a footprint of 20 square meters. Mm. Okay. Very small. Mm. Okay. You need 24 for 500,000. That's 12 million GI sheets. Where do you get that? <laughs> the local market definitely cannot provide that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's why we made a call. If there's any contribution that you want, it is in the construction materials and in particular in the roofing materials. Mm -hmm. okay. You have about two years left. Uh, well, your midterm, so less, about three years more, more or less. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> uh, <Hopefully. laughs> what are your, well, from your experience in government, um, what has been your biggest frustration maybe and what has been the source of your inspiration. Why are you still here despite well, all these flack and all these... I accepted this position on a simple philosophy that it is out of love of God and love of country. Mm -hmm. Believe me or not, that's the main reason why I, why I am here. So I will stick to that. Mm -hmm. Provided I'm needed I, and I think I can still contribute for love of God and love of country, I'll stick it on. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, we wish you all the best of luck. Um, I guess there's there's a lot more to be done as far as well. Just Yolanda is concerned in in Tacloban in the Eastern Visayas area, and that's just one area. We, I'm also directly involved, by the way, in the Zamwanga. Yes, the that's that's another yeah. that's another area. So that one, uh, it's not as extensive. We're in we're we're putting together a a shelter program for 7,200 or so families. Mm -hmm. Some uh, uh, houses on stilts and some on land. Mm -hmm. you know, because 
we have to respect the indigenous people who are the, the Bajaus in particular who are sea based mm -hmm. so we had to reconfigure that portion which was totally damaged by the Sambuanga siege so that we're able to respect if they are if they were on sea base, we will provide them houses on stilts mm -hmm. at a much better uh, condition than when they were where they were. No? Are you on track in Zamboanga? Yes, we just finally got the approval and endorsement of all the sectors and stakeholders, both Muslims, Christians, uh, um, those who were affected, uh, endorsed the program that we presented to them. How about in Bohol? In are Bohol, you also uh, involved? Completely? Yes, uh, we are now uh, redesigning the bridges, which unfortunately were all constructed on the liquefaction zone, mm -hmm. you know, or vulnerable to liquefaction. Our roads were there even before the hazard maps came about. Mm -hmm. okay, so unfortunately, all the roads were on the coastal towns. Mm -hmm. And the coastal towns were are apparently all vulnerable to liquefaction. Mm -hmm. So we're making the adjustments on our designs, as well as the public schools and the hospitals. We're trying to uh, address uh, the vulnerability to liquefaction, earthquake, strong winds, and inundation. Again, no, we have created a program which we refer to as resiliency, mm -hmm. meaning our designs will have to be changed. We have to have redundancy in in the design and to make sure that people uh, are well informed about the hazards. Mm -hmm. So we're focusing on updating the design of school buildings, hospitals, and critical local government facilities like municipal buildings, public markets, and yeah. so on. So we are addressing three major causes mm -hmm. of uh, disasters. No? One is earthquake. Mm -hmm. The other is inundation or flooding. The third would be strong winds. Mm -hmm. you know? So our design, particularly in this Yolanda path, will have to look at those three vulnerabilities. So we're re really learning a lot of lessons that's, from, that's from Yolanda. And uh, very simple cases of uh, tweaking the engineering interventions mm -hmm. can help a lot. Mm -hmm. So th that's what we're trying to work out with uh, the assistance of foreign experts, including UN, uh, yes. and so on and so forth. So we're, we're coming up with uh, a simple guide on how people can reconstruct much better, stronger houses. Very simple engineering interventions and tweaking of the common, uh, you know, you need engineered houses. Mm -hmm. You just don't have a, don't just get a carpenter to put together pieces of wood. No? Yeah. You need some engineering knowledge mm -hmm. to make sure that your houses are built better. Maybe just a last question. Um, what can we expect from DPWH and, and from you in the, in the remaining three years? Okay. Uh, one is the resiliency program. We're focusing on that. And what will this entail? We're now uh, assessing our national roads and bridges network, meaning we're identifying what in the 31,600 kilometers of national roads need to be upgraded and redesigned so that we're, we are sure that they are uh, not going to be, uh, they will always remain passable. Okay? Because we have, unfortunately, a lot of our national roads are either flood prone, mm -hmm. slide, landslide prone, or uh, our bridges are not designed against uh, the earthquake. And there are a lot of cracks. <laughs> Precisely. So that's a major program. And we are going, we have started to designate what we refer to as N1, National Highway 1, mm -hmm. that would give us access north to south, east to west. Okay. So we're starting to identify what are the N1 roads mm -hmm. so that the design can be upgraded. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other aspect is designing more resilient school buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, uh, we are looking at additional uh, upgrades in terms of shear walls, in terms of should we still do one-story classrooms. I would rather do two stories and have concrete walls and concrete slabs without ceiling. Mm -hmm. you know? The cost may not 
be it's going to be a, li a little bit more expensive but at least we can be sure that they will continue to be functional yeah right? the same is true with the hospitals okay we're looking at making hospitals more resilient in terms of design uh, making sure that they have redundancy in power mm -hmm. that in the event of a disaster they continue to function as hospitals mm -hmm. they're not the first to go down mm -hmm. no? yes. so that to me is a major program resiliency the second of course we will continue to run after corruption mm -hmm. so that's a running theme yeah, that's right that's a running that's campaign yeah anti-corruption and good governance will continue to to be pursued Okay, that's, that's a lot of work in the remaining three years. Maybe three years might not be enough. Uh, Less than a hundred days, <laughs> a thousand days. <laughs> You're Less counting. Than, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been speaking with Public Works Secretary Rogelio Singson about his agency's work in the rehabilitation efforts two months after Typhoon Yolanda. I'm Chai Hofelenia. Thanks for watching Talk Thursday.